Welcome to Hidden Gems of Nature. This is our destination today. Join us as we explore and discover the hidden gems along the trail down to this cliff dwelling and some of the hidden gems here in the cliff dwelling. Beautiful hike with rock formations, a little bit of fall color, pretty foliage, great little hike and a beautiful destination. At Hidden Gems of Nature, I don't tell you what the destination is. Instead, I give you clues so you can explore and discover these hidden gems or your own hidden gems. So watch carefully as we identify clues to find these destinations. And remember, subscribe to Hidden Gems of Nature YouTube channel. We're heading east down Highway 60, just east of Florence Junction. We're going to hang a left and turn off of Highway 60 and head north into the Superstition Mountains. So after we've turned north off of Highway 60, now we take a ride off the pavement and onto the dirt. There we go. There we go. Need to turn and head up to the trailhead. We still have about 12 miles to go, but this is about 45 minutes of the drive. So we come up to the Y, been on the road for about 10 miles or so, and we'll want to take the right Y. Driving up to our hike this morning. This is the parking lot. Trailhead. Morning, welcome to Hidden Gems of Nature. We're at the trailhead in the Superstition Mountains. We're on the south side of the Superstition Mountains. This trailhead goes into a couple of great destinations. We're going to head into one of those today, into a cliff dwelling. Uh, join us as we explore and discover the hidden gems along this trail into the cliff dwelling. We're approaching our first Y in the trail. We're actually going to take the left fork of the Y. We'll hit another Y in the trail and we'll, st we'll stay left on that one as well. This is kind of a neat overlook. You can see the canyon that we're going to hike down today. Uh, it's really pretty and green. Like I said, a fire came through here about a year and a half ago, but it was just to the south of us, and I don't think much of it reached up into this canyon. Um, and as you can see from the green down below us, it looks like very little reached into this canyon. There's a lot of creek crossings along this trail. I've hiked this trail once in the winter, a couple of times in the spring, and there's always been water in the in the wash here, or the creek bed. But this is early fall, after a dry monsoon season, so there's no water in the crossings. I was hoping we'd see a little fall color on this trail. I think we're maybe a little early for that, but there's a little bit of color changing in those sycamore leaves. What else is nice about down here in these little bowls where you see a handful of sycamore trees is across the wash, a couple of pinyon pines. You don't see pines up here very often, so kind of nice to see a few pines in the desert mountains. There's actually a couple of valleys up here that are beautiful like that, but this isn't one of them. So I had to get a little bit of red in the fall colors, and here we go. There's a little bit of red. As you can see, the fire swept through this area, but the foliage has come back. I haven't been up here for about a year and a half, but there's a lot of green grown back in after the fire blew through here a year and a half ago. Kind of nice to know it. It's more of a cleansing fire than a destructive fire. We're approaching the second Y in the trail. And there it is right there. We're going to head left again. The other hike to the right is gorgeous. I've only been up it once. In fact, I went up it about a month and a half before 
the fire. So I saw all the beauty up that canyon before the fire. I want to go back up again and see how it's recovered. We're down in the wash, just kind of panning around because there's a little bit of color down here. This part of the uh, wash did not get affected by the fire. The fire actually went around it. There's a, a spring in a side canyon right off this main canyon. We're going to try and head up there. That side canyon wasn't affected. I've only hiked into this section of the canyon twice before. Once in January and once in March, the end of March. And the first time was a night hike. And we were looking for a place to camp and the canyon sides were so steep. We finally found this spot right here and ended up camping right here. We backpacked in. This was the flattest spot we could find. So we camped here. The problem was, had I gone 20 feet further, look what I would have walked into. This is a great campsite. The second time I came in here, I backpacked in with my son, and this is where we camped. 20 feet away. Had it not had it been daytime, we'd have seen it. I should have gone a little bit further. This is a great campsite. This oak tree, big green oak tree, protects you. It's beautiful back in here. So we're heading up the side canyon now. I want to see if I can see the spring. Instead of seeing the spring, I walked into this little hollow and underneath this juniper is about 15 piles of bear sign. Because I'm hiking by myself today, I don't think I'll go much further up the canyon. Most of the bears up here would just soon run from you as look at you. So I doubt I'll see anything but just to be on the safe side. I think we'll turn around and head back. We're almost to our destination. We've gone about three and a half miles. Uh, we're a quarter to a half mile from the uh, dwellings. And this section of the canyon uh, was not affected at all by the fire. So it's really quite lush down in here. Lots of sycamores, oaks, willows, even past a couple of walnut trees. Uh, no water in the wash. Um, but this time of year, you don't expect anything unless there's been a, a recent rain. Anyway, join us as we head just to those cliffs right behind me. And up in those cliffs will be a small cliff dwelling. I'm going to pan down here at the bottom of the canyon. We're down almost to the end. Down at this section of the canyon, it's very narrow. So you know when you get down here to this narrow section, you're almost to the cliff dwelling. You can see that monolith right in the middle of the screen. The monolith just to the right of it is the monolith that sits just above the cliff dwelling. So you'll know you're about a quarter of a mile from the cliff dwelling at this point, and that it just sits underneath that monolith on the right. We'll continue to pan around here to the right side so you can see the cliffs all around this narrow section. Really kind of a pretty little narrow section that we go through and a couple of different or unusual rock formations here. Here's a little window rock. Um, as you approach this rock and head up on top of it, you can actually see the destination from here. It's across the canyon and up. And that is where we will go. This is our final destination. You really can't see it well from here. It's really quite well hidden. But we'll head up into um, the one on the right. It's mostly just a slot. One on the left actually has a dwelling back in it. We'll go back into the dwelling here in just a minute. It's not much of a marked trail, so we'll just kind of head over. Enough people have gone up to this that Kind of a food cache section. Enjoy the video as I walk around and give you a tour of the small cliff dwelling.
trick. You have to come around to get into the dwelling. As we come around this corner and up the stairs into the main section of the cliff dwelling, I'll come up this little path and you can see back down into the section where we just were, and then we'll come back and look at the cliff dwelling. This is isolated from that little section that you just walked right into. You literally have to come outside and scale around those rocks and back into it. This is our destination today. It's a cliff dwelling down a narrow canyon. This cliff dwelling is actually very difficult to see from the outside. You can't see it. Uh, somebody, I know the first time I came here, we actually saw some people over here and that's why we were able to find it so easy. This is only my uh, third or fourth time in here, but it's a, it's pretty cool, well-preserved cliff, uh, cliff dwelling. This is the main front room section. As we go into the front door and turn, we go right into the uh, covered room. The covered room is pretty dark, so I've got a quick shot here and then we'll take another shot from one of the side windows that and then we'll come back out into the main room section and and out and around the cliff dwelling and back into the corner of the dwelling it looks like there was another room in the back and maybe some more food cache locations back here The top of the Pueblo looks like. Looks like it's fallen in there. Pretty cool looking. Got one of those little food storage units back there. This is the view from the cliff dwelling. I guess it's prime real estate up here. You get to see down into the foliage, it's pretty thick. The, the fire didn't affect this at all, so really a nice view from the cliff dwelling. Enjoy your hike and enjoy the cliff dwelling.